The amount of technology in today's modern electric cars is truly mind-boggling. And sometimes that technology, no matter how good the engineering test procedures ahead of series production are, have small design flaws or faults that ultimately result in the car needing to be fixed. Sometimes that fix can be done through a firmware reflash, where low-level code essential for correct operation of specific hardware components or sub-processors is updated, or through a software update for the vehicle's main central computer system. Both of these, of course, can be carried out via a visit to your local dealership or, in the case of Tesla, and an increasing number of rival automakers through an over-the-air software update. However, sometimes components within the vehicle fail. Mechanical or electronic, there is no solution but to replace them. It doesn't matter if it's a faulty part that wasn't properly manufactured, a part that wasn't properly fitted, or any other number of poorly engineered parts whose failure wasn't predicted by extensive pre-production testing. There is only one true solution, and that's part replacement. Tesla is famous for its over-the-air software updates, something that allows it to refine vehicle functionality, add new features, and yes, even tweak the efficiency of things like the drivetrain. It's even been able to address minor issues with its cars via OTA updates, saving it and its customers a lot of money and time on costly service center visits. But today, Tesla officially announced an extensive voluntary recall campaign that will affect approximately 130,000 Tesla Model S and Tesla Model X cars that were made between 2012 and 2018. It's to address the cause of a well-known fault among older Model S and Model X cars that can leave the giant touchscreen display in the center of the dash unresponsive or completely inoperable. Today, I'm going to examine the problem, discuss what caused it, and detail how Tesla is planning on fixing it. As you probably know, the touchscreen display inside every Tesla made since the very first Model S cars started rolling off the production lines not only acts as a massive information screen for the driver, but it also allows the driver to interact with and change vehicle settings. And behind the screen is a computer system running Tesla's very own special distribution of Linux. While there are many discrete computers inside every Tesla, especially with later cars that feature autopilot hardware, this particular computer is known by Tesla as the MCU, Media Control Unit, because you've guessed it, it's responsible for everything you see on that massive touchscreen display. Like any computer system, Tesla's MCU has a central processing unit, the CPU, it has a graphical processing unit, the GPU, and of course it has random access memory, or RAM, computer memory that stores data for tasks that the computer is actively doing. But just like your laptop computer or mobile phone, it needs a longer-term storage system, a place to store its system files. And in that early version of Tesla's MCU, Tesla opted to use something called an Embedded Multimedia Card, or eMMC. The embedded bit of the name comes because it's physically soldered to the board, and in the automotive industry, eMMCs are a fairly common way to small, small amounts of data because they're cheaper than a conventional solid state drive or SSD and generally don't require as much physical power or processing power to operate. eMMCs are essentially like the SD card that you put in your smartphone or camera. They're great for storing data in the short term, but they're not designed to be written to and erased time and time and time again. If you write data to them and then you erase that data before then rewriting it again thousands of times, the flash memory inside them will lose their ability to reliably store data. In a use case scenario where data is written to an MMC or an eMMC, stored for a while and then erased and filled up with new data, that's not a big problem. That SD card you've got in your camera has a projected lifespan of around 10 years given normal use. And in most automotive applications that use eMMCs, the read-write cycle is pretty low because the system they're attached to uses them to store things like vehicle settings or the last radio station that you happen to listen to. Tesla's MCU, because of its sheer complexity, creates and has to manage a lot more data. And in the case of the Tesla operating system, like most Linux variants, it creates a log file, essentially a digital ledger of all the things that have happened during the time the system has been active, 
to better monitor the car's systems, but also provide more granular information to Tesla in case something were to go wrong. And here is where the problem occurs. Because of the level of system logging applied by Tesla in its operating system, there is a lot of data that gets written to and read from the eMMC during normal vehicle operation. And that ultimately causes the flash memory inside the eMMC to wear out, causing weird behavior like an unresponsive touchscreen, random screen freezes, or at worst, a blank screen. Side note. While SSDs operate using the same basic principles at the simplest of levels, they both store data as a series of zeros and ones inside flash memory chips, a good SSD is built in such a way that it can level out the wear and tear on the drive over time so that each memory chip is written to and erased a similar number of times. They also, the good ones at least, have spare memory chips so that they can take over if an error is detected on a particular overused memory chip within the drive. They're also constructed with a larger number of memory paths to or from the computer. And the memory chips then don't have to work so hard. It can reduce wear and tear. And while Tesla was said to have used wear leveling on its eMMC, the problem was compounded by the increasing size of Tesla's over-the-air updates, which have started to consume more and more of the available storage space, leaving less space for the log files. In short, SSDs are more robust than MMCs and eMMCs, but that robustness comes at the expense of cost. Tesla's eMMC units in the original Model S and Model X MCUs were 8 gigabytes in size, which also made the problem worse. They were large enough to store lots of data, but small enough to require more frequent read and writes to the same physical memory address, which again speeds up the memory deterioration, especially with those increasingly large over-the-air update files. So now that you know what this tiny little chip is and what it does, let's look at the issue of fixing it. Originally, when the error surfaced, Tesla replaced faulty MCUs in cars that were still under warranty. But since this issue is one that gets worse with age, many cars didn't wear out their MCUs until after the warranty had expired. For cars out of warranty, Tesla originally charged upwards of $1,800 to customers to swap out the faulty MCU and the EMC inside it and replace it with a new one. Some third-party independent repair facilities, meanwhile, offered component-level repair, offering to desolder the faulty EMMC from the MCU and replace it with a new one. This is a process that's a lot cheaper for the end consumer, but far more intricate, complicated, and specialized. It also happens to create less waste, but according to those who reached out to Tesla when the problem originally arose, that's something that Tesla wasn't interested in doing. It was ultimately easier, if more wasteful, for Tesla just to replace the entire MCU, eMMC et al. As more cars have been made and the strain on these eMMC chips have increased due to increased software complexity, we're seeing more and more of these cars develop the issue. One way Tesla has approached repair is to sell customers an upgrade to their MCU to a newer version with more computing power and capabilities. Originally, Tesla charged two and a half thousand US dollars or equivalent for this, but it's since reduced that price to 1500 US dollars. While it also increased its warranty coverage for affected vehicles by issuing an extended warranty for cars under eight years or 100,000 miles to give them a direct replacement rather than upgrade, it still didn't officially engage in a recall campaign. But responding to customer complaints about the issue, the US National Highway Traffic Safety Administration has been examining this problem for nearly a year and last month, after concluding its report, put pressure on Tesla to issue a recall campaign. It implied that the faulty units could increase the risk of a crash, as well as stop rear view camera functionality, affect indicator operation, and prevent drivers from using demisters and de-icing facilities off the windscreen. It wrote a letter to the company last month requesting Tesla to issue a recall. But in a January 22nd, 2021 firmware update, Tesla changed the code to warn customers one to six months in advance that their MCU would need replacing, and actually said that drivers, quote, should perform a shoulder check and use the mirrors, end quote, when backing up, noting that drivers could clear the windscreen manually if they couldn't reach the climate controls. 
this first piece of advice is something that frankly everyone should do as a precautionary measure, rear view camera or not. But the second one certainly reminds me of my time 15 years ago driving obscure, limited run, barely functioning electric city cars. Not a high end luxury EV. Suffice to say, NHTSA isn't impressed and further pressure appears to have been applied, with NHTSA saying that the inability to defrost or defog the windscreen would decrease drivers' visibility and increase the chances of a crash in inclement weather. Tesla had originally claimed that no accidents had occurred as a result of the failure, and it also disputed the fact that bricked MCU screens posed an actual safety risk. NHTSA, meanwhile, says it's logged more than 12,000 complaints, field reports and warranty claims related to this issue. It also says that the failure rate for the Tesla MCU is higher than it is for other cars that had similar systems and faults. Tesla says the recall, now officially announced, will begin on March 30th and has advised owners to upgrade to the latest software version for their car, that's 2020.48.12 or later, to ensure that they don't lose access to defrosting and backup camera and turn signal. As part of the recall, had Tesla refused to issue it, by the way, NHTSA would have taken it to court, Tesla has stated it will replace the faulty eMMC free of charge with a brand new 64 gigabyte eMMC. That is eight times the size of the original memory unit. Should you get it done? Absolutely. This recall is important as it ensures continued functionality of the MCU and affected cars. And if you've had the replacement already and you've paid for it, well, I would suggest that you contact Tesla to see what happens next. And before I go, I do want to throw in something completely unrelated here to a different recall campaign, that of the 2017 through 2019 Chevrolet Bolt EVs. As you might remember, Chevrolet had issued a software update at the end of last year designed to limit the maximum charge percentage of affected vehicles while it sought out a more permanent solution to the fact that a handful of Chevrolet Bolt EVs had burst into flames after having their batteries fully charged. GM had originally stated it would begin working on a permanent solution at the start of this year, and as of the time of filming this, we haven't heard anything back. But we are going to loop back to GM this week to see if there's any further news, and if we do have some, I'll share. I just wanted you all to know that we haven't forgotten about that campaign. That's it for today. As always, thanks to the folks on my right for being our $15 to $49 a month Patreon supporters. Special thanks to our $50 a month patrons. That's John Lyons, Ray Jean Fellows, Jeffrey Songster, Anonymous Freak, Paul Conway, Laura Sanborn, Anthony Coates, and Tesla in the Gong. And our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month Patreon supporters. Those include Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, JP Fagerbuck, Sean Ueda, Will Graylin, and Ian. You can join all of these amazing Patreon supporters by following the links below, or you can use one to send us a donation through Ko-fi or Bitcoin. You'll also find a link to our free Discord server, so sign up and come and join in the fun. And if you're in need of some swag, don't forget to check out our merch over at Redbubble. After the names have finished scrolling, you will see a suggestion for a new video to watch, so please consider watching it if you haven't, especially if you haven't watched Erin's new Vault video, and I'll be back very soon. Thanks for joining me, and as always, keep evolving!